Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee and Football, presented by Adam Lowy and the Lowy Law Firm. I'm your host, Blake Monroe. Where I'm joined this morning by Bobby Burton and Jerry Hamilton. Spring practice back on today. Bobby, you're on location there. Got to be excited for today, right? Yeah, absolutely. I already took a couple pictures of the, of the uh, backdrop today for uh, the Longhorns practicing out at Denius Fields. They'll get going here in about an hour. Uh, there'll be a uh, 20 to 30 minute viewing window for media uh, myself cj vogel are in in town for that uh and ready to roll the longhorns guys uh fifth practice overall for texas this one should be in pads the last two have been uh and we'll see if they're starting to separate some the wheat from the chaff a little bit here uh in the fifth practice this time last year is exactly when guys uh we had uh, a couple of guys start making moves and asserting themselves in the roster lineup. If you remember, Amar, um, uh, the, the last year, A.D. Mitchell was not first team until uh, the second week of practice. We'll see where Amari Nyblag, Andrew Makuba, Trey Moore, and guys like that are, are at least right now, uh, on, uh, on the roster. And I see all these people talking about where they got their coffee. Kirby Lane for me this morning. Very good. I'll just put it that way, along with some pancakes, Jerry. It's the life for me this morning, but it was tea. Red Bull. Got to get one. Red Bull. Red Bull. Jeez. <laughs> your, your gut is going to look like, I don't know, it's going to be rotted when you're my age. Like. I, I put much more stuff in. It's okay. All right, guys. Well, afterwards, Sark going to meet with the media. Uh, Bobby, I, what are you expecting there? What are you hoping to hear from him today? Uh, you know, really the primary things that I'm I'm looking for is anything that he says that stands out as it relates to uh, personnel um, and anything that he's seeing or sensing overall from the team. So really twofold, right? Uh, he talked this time last year about how he felt the team was kind of coming together and the culture was getting there that he wanted. It wasn't just a one-person culture type situation with Roshan Johnson the year before. Um, so I, I'm interested to see what buzzwords he, he uses to talk about this team. And then overall, for me, guys, it's really about, you know, what does he think of the new guys? Uh, where are they sitting? Who's made a big jump? Th those are the storylines that we'll always follow during spring ball. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting uh, after the uh, Monday press conference, which uh, CJ Vogel was at. I, CJ and I were on hand for the media, open media window. Um Andrew Bakuba got a lot of praise from Sark Bobby, and Trey Moore continues to get praise. I, I you know, I kind of said the way Sark talked about what you had reported on Trey Moore, by the way, but prior to spring practice, then what Sark said after that first spring practice, I kind of said, All right, man, this guy's this guy might be one of the rare transfers that may be one of your team captains. And I continue to get that feel from Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, I mean, he's literally – he can't stop talking about Trey more, and it's more than just the drills and the football. It's – he encompasses everything they've built in the program uh, and continue uh, to want to have in the program. So it, it's rare when somebody talks about a transfer uh, like Steve Sarkeesian's talking about Trey more this early. I agree. I mean, very odd and – at the same time, uh, it is some some news that we had behind the scenes uh, at the outset, Jerry. I mean, we we heard about this going into it, right? That he was a uh, came to came to campus a little ready, a little more ready to be an assertive, uh, so to speak, uh, out of the gate. And that's exactly what he's been thus far. I'm I'm waiting to see a little bit more of the defensive line drills. I'm going to try to pay a little bit more attention uh, to guys like I don't know Leonga Lafau, Darian Gallette, Jamon Tapp. Uh, see how those guys are doing today during the, the, the viewing period. I think CJ is going to take mostly the offense. Uh, so hopefully we get a guy. Yeah, Samaj Burrell is another one uh, that we need to talk about uh, and looking looking forward to him. So it's a, the good thing about uh, what Sark is doing here by opening up uh, more and more of uh, the practices is you get a better sense for the team, a better feel for it overall, um, and not just hearing what you're, what you're listening to behind the scenes, right? Uh, and so I think that's been a, a very good thing for us. Hey, by the way, Sonny says 24 days until the spring game. That is true. And Bobby, yes, Bobby found a great tree there, Jenny. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, somebody asked about Matthew Golden. Look, I think Matthew Golden looks very good. Uh, 
I, I he's going to be look DeAndre Moore. Who those guys are going to have to work to hold him off. The returning guys. Matthew Golden is a very very good football player. He's got that correct chip on his shoulder. Um, look, and the thing with the uh, with the um, with Matthew Golden is really you know he's one of the top kickoff return guys in the country too, and that's not even factoring into what we see right now. Uh, but I, I think Matthew Golden is such a high end competitor. Uh, from my days, you know, this you see that the note the things you notice, like I was at a Klein Kane, it had nothing to do with football. I was at a track meet one spring, and just the competitiveness he showed in the long jump pit, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy with first jump, he wasn't happy with second jump. He's that guy's competing with himself all the time. And I love that, I've always loved that about Matthew Golden. That was part of the national rankings team back at, at that point. Um, in you know, we had him in the top 200 in the country, and, and I was a firm believer uh, in what Matthew Golden would be. Um, and, and I and I don't think I don't think even Houston saw the best of Matthew Golden. I think Texas fans are going to see the best of Matthew Golden. I've got it. I've got to mention this, Jerry, because the practice I've been to, the thing about Matthew Golden, and and I want to get your take on this. I would call him the silent assassin. Yeah, that's kind of what he is. He's not. He's not real vociferous. He's not out there yelling and screaming, you know, that sort of stuff. DeAndre Moore is a little bit the same way, right? They just go out there and do their business. Um, and so I'm pretty impressed with how he handles himself at this point. Of course, it's only a couple practices in. Only been here for a while, uh, for a little while now. But he does have some experience. So I, I just think that, you know, they're going to be fine at receiver. I don't know if they'll be as elite as last year when Mitchell and Worthy could really – turn a game i will we'll see if they're that that group i don't know yet uh we're still we're still young into this uh but i'm i'm excited about golden i'm excited about isaiah bond uh really excited about ryan wingo what he can bring as well so uh should be interesting makuba is another one jerry oh yeah that, that you mentioned and you know right now he's running second team and maybe they just have two different groups of safeties they roll out right right that they could have done that last year but they played more mix and match I'm not so sure they don't roll out two groups of safeties this year. That that might be a thing they do. Yeah, uh, I, I've heard Savea's doing very well too, and in in, in uh, as expected with him, he's going to be a key contributor this year. By the way, somebody asked about Texas relays. The college portion of that starts today. I believe the high schools begins tomorrow on some level, but Friday, Saturday, main. Uh, the main events. And here's a list of some guys. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Cedric Griffin's son. We've had Cedric on here before. So Sway fast. Griffin is in three events at Texas Relays. 110 hurdles, four by 200, and the high jump. That's a pretty, that pretty much runs the gamut of, hey, I'm a really good athlete, guys. I mean, you're hurdling, you're on a sprint relay, and you're high jumping. Uh, also some guys to note, that will be at Texas Relays, DeCorian Moore, uh, 4x100 and long jump, Kelshawn Johnson from Hitchcock, 4x1, 4x2, uh, Jalen Lott, high jump from Panther Creek, obviously his father, re really good player, Emmanuel Choice from Lancaster, 110 hurdles and 4x400, and then London Smith, a young kid out of Waco University of Texas, is offered 4x400. Uh, I mentioned Swade Griffin. There's a number of others, uh, right? But the key here is as long as those kids are competing in the relays, they can't go visit Texas for football. So after the relays conclude or after they're done, if they want to stop by the facility, they can. I've asked a couple of those guys. I think it's 50-50 whether they do, because a lot of those guys are coming back April 6th for a spring football practice weekend, right? Or they're coming back April 20th for the spring game. So I'm not sure – this, you know, stopping by and talking with the coaches for 10, 15 minutes is that big of a deal when they're going to be right back on campus a week or two or three later. Uh, before we move on, guys, Bobby, I need you to tell folks out there about Adam Lowy and the Lowy Law Firm. Yeah, absolutely. Our friend Adam Lowy has been helping injured Texans for a couple of decades now. Visit him at LowyLawFirm.com. Uh, if you've been injured in a car wreck, a, a bike wreck, motorcycle accident, what have you, and you think you might be due compensation, Adam and his firm will give you a free uh, consultation, absolutely free, and discuss with you your options and whether or not they think you might be due some compensation. Uh, so head it off at the pass. Give Adam and his group a shout, LoweyLawFirm.com. We appreciate them and their sponsorship of every Wednesday's Coffee and Football. 
Hey, uh, guys, y'all mentioned uh, the Texas relays. Uh, so the y'all know where we normally park for practice, Jerry. Those parking lots uh, are kind of blocked off right now yeah. uh, for the Texas relays themselves right now. And so you can get into the LBJ school uh, over here near the Denius Fields, uh, but it is full-on Texas relay season at the University of Texas right now up here on Speedway. Uh, very interesting. Uh, just It's getting ready to be fun. And, and I want to add one thing. You mentioned all those other guys, and then we talked a little bit about Swade Griffin, or you talked a little bit about Swade Griffin. He's not small either. Jerry. No. He's no. a bigger athlete yeah. that's doing all those events. So I would I would circle that. And then you mentioned – and so obviously – Cedric's his dad played in the NFL, played at Texas on the national championship. And then you meant you mentioned James Lott's son. Uh, you know, James high jumped seven foot. You know, I think he still holds the state record or is close to it. Um, and his son, Jalen, is one of the more explosive athletes in the state of Texas. He's an underclassman uh, that's going to be recruited coast to coast. Uh, but, uh, you know, big time. Good, his, good, his good, son's good, big good time. Ties. Yeah, yeah, good size. Hey. Hey, uh, Blake, bring up uh, uh, living rent freeze. Okay. What if Schenectady was on my mind? It's crazy. It was on my mind this morning, early this morning. So one, if this is James Thomas, then it's great to see you back, man. Uh, one of the great rebounders uh, in Texas history uh, played on that final four team. But I, I wanted to congratulate Rob Lanier on getting the rice job. He was unceremoniously let go at SMU because they think they're going to become a power national program, and they're not. Um, but he had, he won 20 games this year and went to the NIT and was fired on Thursday. Uh, but I want to congrats, say congrats to Rob on getting the Rice game and uh, the Rice job, and I think he's going to do a great job there. He'll be the best coach Rice has had, most successful in a long time. But I said that to say this, guys. Rob Lanier is who recruited TJ Ford to Texas. And Rob Lanier will always have a special – place for me because I was covering TJ at that time and Rob Lanier helped get Texas basketball going under Rick Barnes without Rob Lanier there's no TJ Ford at Texas hey hey Jerry you had you mentioned Schenectady in New York is that because he also recruited uh, James Thomas that's it that's it look Rob Lanier recruited James Thomas out of Schenectady Roy Al Ivey's only other offer was Hofstra and then he recruited TJ Ford so you could say Rob Lanier was a, I mean, Rick Barnes is the head coach and Rick hired Rob, right? But Rob, that relationship with TJ Ford's mom, uh, and a great job he did in recruiting TJ and Pop Ford, Pop Ford and Mary Ford, that's the reason Texas basketball took off. He deserves, he's been a great evaluator for a long time, even going and getting Bradley Beal to Florida and getting on him early before everybody knew how good he was. Rob's always been a great evaluator, but he's unbelievable in relationships. And for the guy, for the Texas basketball fans, whether you're casual or diehard, he's the reason TJ went to Texas. All right, Joel, we've talked about spring ball. Let's talk a little bit about recruiting. Jerry, you've posted some stuff over on ontexasfootball.com, but what's the latest there with the Longhorns when it comes to recruiting? Yeah, a couple of, a couple of things. I just posted some uh, uh, Wednesday morning recruiting uh, nuggets, notes. Um, so I'm going to start with that. But there was two big official visitors news that we broke it on Texas football yesterday. But I want to start with DeCorian Moore is expected to be at April 20th spring game. That one's pretty much locked in. So for the people that are following the slugfest between LSU and Texas with DeCorian Moore, not counting out Oregon, Ohio State, a couple others, uh, he is expected to be on campus April 20th for the Texas spring game. That is scheduled. That is locked in. Uh, so just, just know that. Then a linebacker. Um, who I can't pronounce, Botang, uh, Nawasu Botang from IMG Academy, top 100 kid in the country, linebacker, inside backer. He told me uh, yesterday and reiterated this morning, April 13th, he'll unofficially visit Texas. So, look, Texas continues. This is what we've talked about. They continue to get a lot of the best players in the country on campus for that full evaluation. I mean, look, Mateo Tungai is, is a, and Riley Pettijan, and, and Elijah Barnes are at the top of the linebacker board in that class. But this, again, this is where Texas has the ability now to get every kid on campus they want almost and make that big evaluation, make that further evaluation. He'll visit the same weekend as Major Preston, four-star DB out of IMG, and Fahim Delane, the uh, four-star safety hybrid linebacker out of good counsel. Uh, but then the, two, the, two, the news we broke yesterday, both official visit dates, 
Uh, I, one of Bobby's favorites, Smith or Ogbo, the edge out of Hastings. The if he, Texas fans will remember the last big time player out of Hastings was Rod Wright. Now they're in Rod Wright. Smith or Ogbo is scheduled to be at Texas April 6th, but the news yesterday, official visit June 14th through 16th. One of the most explosive, twitchy edge prospects in the state and in the country in 2025. Texas will get two visits, one that June 14th, 16th official visit when they'll have Hayden Lowe, big time edge out of Westlake Village, uh, their Oaks Christian in California, and Lance Jackson on campus, who's committed, obviously. That's about three as good of three edges as you'll see visit on the same weekend anywhere. And then the other news was Nick Brooks, the mauler from uh, Cedar Rapids JFK High School uh, in Iowa. Nick Brooks has locked in his official visit to Texas June 14th through 16th. Uh, Georgia, May 31st, June 2nd. Iowa, June 21st through 23rd. Those are the three top teams. Ohio State's in it. There's some others in it. But those are the three official visits he has locked in right now. There have been some question of when that visit was going to take place. But, again, we had been reporting for a while that we felt like Nick Brooks was going to officially visit Texas. Now that's locked in. Texas group offensive linemen, those 10 guys, 11 guys right now are locked in for official visits. Uh, uh, Kyle Flood's going to come away with a really, really good four or five-man class out of this, guys. Oh, you're muted, Bobby. I love Smith Rogbo. Uh, <laughs> look, long, explosive, um, and you know he has the frame to get bigger. Um, I, if they were to get him and Lance Jackson out of this class, I would say that's a home run. Yes. Period. Um, and that, that's my point. Is look, you also put up the, about the tight end out of Kansas visiting. Texas, uh, Texas right now, they're just recruiting on a different level. I saw Botang out of IMG and yeah. Major Preston last year in person last year. They, those guys are they're, they're Texas just recruiting a cut above and trying to, to up it even more. I don't think I'm not saying where they'll if they'll finish top three, top five, whatever the number is, but I don't think Steve Sarkeesian is going to be happy with just the top five class. I, I'm 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 sincere about that. I think. I think he has his eyes set on something maybe a little bit more this year. Uh, somebody's asking about uh, Josh Petty as well, offensive lineman out of Roswell, Georgia. Uh, I was told again last night that the family is looking to make an unofficial visit to Texas, and that's the key. Uh, because, look, with Nick Brooks, he's coming in April 20th for the spring game, and then he's coming back for a June visit. Josh Petty was by himself with the California Power team on Friday. Had a great visit. The key then is now the parents getting on campus with Josh Petty before a June official visit. If you kind of look at what the way Kyle Flood's operated in Texas recruiting, uh, operating and recruiting, they like to get the family on campus with the kid for an unofficial visit, then get to that June official visit. Uh, because I think that's when Texas has a feel for, okay, is this worth both? Is this worth moving forward for both parties? So that key, that next visit's key with Josh Petty. Um, but Nick Brooks will be on campus for the spring game and then in June 14th through 16th. So uh, Texas obviously uh, uh, feels like they're going to have a legitimate shot there. I think Georgia may be the team to beat for Nick Brooks, but I was fighting hard. One thing that we need to talk about, fellas, real quick is, you know, we had the bracket challenge. Um, yes. Courtesy, we had the, the prize there that's still up for grabs, courtesy of 40 Acres Apparel. And I was looking at the leaderboard here. I took the first, I think this is like the first 16, 17 places. A lot of time. One at the top, Hulahin Golfer with 99.9% .9 correct. That blows my mind with all the upsets or lack of upsets in some cases. Uh, and then still quite a few people there right at the top. So it's still up for grabs. You see that Hulahin can score a max of 1770, but President Mumbles. And score 1790. So, I mean, you know, it's still anybody's game at this point. This weekend will really kind of weed it out. I'm like in 70th place. 780th. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I gave up on mine. My, my we had, hey, hey, we had 300 plus people uh, uh, sign up. And uh, again, the, the winner of this will get $200 worth of free uh, gear from our friends at the 40 Acres Collective. Uh, that's uh, Jerry and I wear their stuff all the time at during game days and, uh, and, and other times when we're doing appearances, uh, 40 acres collective, they do a great job 
with officially licensed Longhorn merchandise. They really do. Yeah. So still anybody's game. We'll, Good luck, uh, Hoovahan. Good luck. Find out here. All right. So we have a super chat, guys, from Brandon Huey. He's and of course this video came out from TMZ yesterday. Ben Sean in a bar kind of got sucker punched. Um, and he says, what y'all's thoughts on that video? What a bad look. And I said the same on Twitter and I got like all these people mad at me. I think a lot of it just because of who he is, but in agreeance, I don't, it's not the best look in my opinion. I'm curious y'all's thoughts. It's a horrible look. I mean, when is being on a TMZ video? Good. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I love, Vince like nobody. you know, I love Vince like nobody, but look, getting, you know, what's a, and, and I don't want to be, you don't want to judge anybody, but I mean, he, who's going to be in a shot bar at age 40? You know, I, that's the other thing that at some point you got to figure out what's what and where you need to be. Uh, but I love Vince to death and he got cold cocked. And I mean, there's things happen in life, right? I don't, I don't think it's, it, there's a difference between it being a bad look and being bad. If that makes sense too. Vince wasn't, I don't think he was bad in that situation. Yeah. Right. He wasn't, you know, doing something nefarious or, or anything like that. So I don't, I don't, but I don't mind that. It, it again, it's there's a difference between a bad look and actually being bad. And I don't think Vince was bad in that regard, based on what I've been told. The, the uh, you know, not knowing anything about the situation, I went to a uh, just kind of a, a a funny thought. It was a sucker punch, obviously, but that guy that guy did the one thing USC couldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and USC tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pete Carroll right, will guys. never live that down. He'll never <laughs> live that day down. <laughs> well, we get, got time for questions here, so please get your questions in. We'll get to as many as we can. And uh, we got some recruiting questions. We'll start off with those. UT Boy says, Jerry, who do you like more, Riley or Elijah? I think they are equally awesome. Now, I, too, think they are equally awesome. Uh, they're different linebackers. That's the one thing. Elijah Barnes is that. 225, 230 pounds. And I watched him at track practice at Skyline a few weeks ago. It was very impressive uh, at that size, the way he runs. Um, physical, downhill guy uh, at linebacker who can play in space. He's not void of talent to play in space, but he is really a physical football player, a downhill football player. Uh, so I think he's different. I think Riley Pettijon is that, but also really good space player. I mean, Elijah Barnes is a guy that could be a 250-pound middle backer, play him out at edge, too, kind of have some versatility about him as a pass rusher. I like I like both those guys. I think they're both top 100 type kids in the country, um, no matter where people have them ranked. That's just kind of where I come out on those guys. I, you would take both of them if you're Texas. You would be happy if you get one of them, right? And then there's a linebacker from San Clemente, who I put in the same class with those. Uh, so they have all three of those guys coming in for official visits. If Texas knocks out two of those guys, that's a heck of a linebacker class, Bobby. I, I love them. I love where they're at. And I, I think Johnny, you and I talked about this over the weekend, Jerry, after, uh, uh, just look at the linebacker group they've got going on right now. Um, uh, you know, from sea to shining sea, so to speak, yeah. right. You just mentioned one from IMG, you know, they're in on one in California, this elite. There's two up in Dallas, uh, maybe three with Caleb Cunningham or uh, Jonathan Cunningham. I, I, my, my thought is right now, I think linebacker recruiting is going to be in really good hands with Johnny Nance. I, I genuinely believe yeah. that. And so whether it's Barnes or Pettijan or both or a mix of others, right? Uh, Anthony Williams, we're not even mentioning out of Shadow Creek right now. Um, they're they're going to be fine. Uh, and, and I think that I think Nansen is going to end up being a plus recruiter for Texas. Well, well, and I'm not well, saying I'm not saying Jeff Choate wasn't good, but I think Nansen's a different style of recruiter, maybe a little bit more of a plus recruiter, can also recruit other positions for you, that sort of thing. Yeah, and I think Nansen is so strong in California on the West Coast. Yep. That is huge for uh, Texas. All right, guys, this next question here is uh, from Living Rent Free in UT. He says, any positive Dorian Brew news? 
still looking like June 14th through 16th uh, when he gets those visits locked in. That's likely. Um, Ohio State's June 21st through 23rd. Good chance he's uh, possibly at the spring game or in a makes an April visit. So I think things are moving. I think that's a true. That's one of the true national battles in Texas for Texas. I mean, look, USC's in it. LSU is going to be in it on some level. His father ran track there and Corey Raymond's all in. Ohio State obviously is in the battle. Texas is in the battle. Oregon's trying to get – I mean, you think about the programs that you just, we just named here with Dorian Brew. That is a true, true national battle um, that Texas is in. A&M's tried. I'm not sure where they kind of sit in that. But uh, it, it, there's connections to multiple schools with the dad in LSU, the mom in Ohio State. Uh, Texas is selling the staying close to home. USC is trying to build off some momentum they have on defense right now. That is one of the more interesting true national recruiting battles on a top target in Texas for Texas. And uh, Jerry, it is time for everybody's favorite time of the day. And that's when you tell folks about Manscaped and how they can win their battle. With Manscaped. Oh, man. Guys, look, here it is. Here's the Lawnmower 5.0. It goes with me everywhere, as it should. This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped.com. Not the Astros, not the Rangers in spring training. This is the spring cleaning champions. This season, make sure to groom those carpets and those drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that nasty winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers Bobby's looking at to his right and left in Austin. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code ONTEXAS, all caps, for 20% off plus free shipping. Here's the thing. Hate making a mess? Not to worry. This bad boy's waterproof. Shave in the shower? Take it in the bath. Hell, you can go in the ocean and take a swim, and Manscaped's going to survive. Manscaped.com. Use code ONTEXAS, all caps, for 20% off plus free shipping. Don't be the only Texas fan that doesn't use the Manscaped 5.0 Ultra. Be one of the millions that are. Great job, Jerry Hamilton, as always. And we have another Super Chat, fellas. We're going to switch gears to some team-related questions. This one from Jay Lee. Thank you, Jay. Comparing where our offensive line was several years to where it is now is pretty amazing. Can we all just take a second to appreciate how far that room has come and how crucial it is to our future? I just think it's a crazy. Uh, you know, I look back, I've been going to these practices for almost – I mean, I guess 30 years, if you go back to my days in college, I, I, I look, the offensive line is in a better place today than it has been in since I've been, been at Texas. I'm mean, just telling you that's since 88. Um, there's more depth. I'm not saying it's as high end necessarily as it was with uh, Blaylock, Scott, Stuttered, um, those guys in sin line. But it's close, if not – I mean, Kelvin Banks may be higher ranked than those guys. At one point, Mike Williams, Cedric Docker – or Derek Dockery and uh, Leonard Davis were on the same offensive line. That was so a that, pretty strong line. Yeah, exactly. So it, the top end is, is – but the depth, Jerry, is the real difference. They go – they literally could go 12 deep. They don't – hopefully they don't need to because they've got right. some guys that it would hurt if they lost for sure. Um, but Jay Lee is right in that the depth is legitimate and strong. It's not uh, – there's not this huge drop-off uh, from one to two uh, across the board. Now, I would say take Kelvin Banks out of that because even though Trevor Goosby looks good, I mean, Kelvin Banks is a possible top ten pick, et cetera. But other than that, like I, if Texas were to lose Jake Majors right now, I mean, knock on wood, it doesn't happen. Um, I don't I, – I don't, worry super worry about that if they lose look if they lose dj campbell you don't super worry about that you don't it, there's just there's not a lot of that going on because of what they've built and frankly they've done it in three years and they didn't do it using the portal like right that's the other the thing that's very impressive about the offensive line 
Texas did not go to the portal to get the, no. to get the depth where it is. I mean, think about OU. OU's had to go to the portal, and Beaten Ball was there the whole time. Yes. He never left to go yes. with Riley. Yes. Um, and so I think it's very impressive what what uh what Texas has done, not only Kyle Flood, but also Steve Sarkeesian. Uh and uh I it's one of the reasons I'm high on this team heading into this year is the, the depth and strength of the offensive line. This year and beyond. I, I, so there's two things that point to how really good the depth and the young talent is. Hayden Connor has been a three-year starter. And even the fact that he has worked at center in practice, be interested to see what he did. The fact that Texas is able to entertain him at other positions tells you how good the depth is and how good the young talent is in the program. Think about six years ago, you couldn't even have that thought. Then there's Cole Hudson, who started every game as a freshman, has had his comeback, and he's he's trying to come back from some injury uh, issues, right? But in years past, that guy would have walked back into his starting spot, no questions asked. And the other thing with Cole is he was a legitimate center prospect. But Texas is so deep at center now, he's just at left guard. I mean, so that like that is how that is how much work Kyle Flood and Sarkeesian have done on the offensive line. Where five six years ago. No chance you're moving Hayden, even looking at Hayden Connor anywhere else after he started three years at left guard. And Cole Hudson would have been right back in his starting role when he was healthy. That's what the talent and depth. Those are just two, two examples of how far this offensive line has come for the University of Texas. Uh, this next question from Trace wants to discuss linebackers. And he says, are there any news on the depth chart for the linebackers? Aside from Hill and Benda, feels like we have less insight than on defensive line or defensive back. Is Blackstar really. an important addition or simply settling in like some of the previous Alabama transfers? I, I think he's a depth piece behind Benda. Um, I, I do think I would agree with you that we have less insight. I, I, I will admit that because, I also know Mo Blackwell is going to be in the rotation. CJ reported on Monday that that Blackwell was actually seeing some time inside the box, which hasn't been what he's done previously. And that's on top of him gaining 10 pounds this offseason. Uh, so I, I and, and the reason I think we have less insight is they haven't done, we haven't seen a lot of inside hull drills at this point, right? So inside run is where guys like, we'll see whether or not, We'll see whether or not Mo Blackwell can really play inside there, right? And we haven't seen those yet. Um, uh, the other reason we don't have that much clarity is because, look, Leonga LaFau, Samaje Burrell, Darian Gallette, those guys are all young, and they're behind some other guys. And uh, we've we've mentioned that we feel like uh, LaFau in particular has some uh, special ability, but we haven't necessarily seen it with the ones, right? Because Anthony Hill himself is fairly young. I, I, I – I think that the two positions or three positions that I'm really looking for today um, are going to be uh, defensive end, defensive tackle, and linebacker. And obviously, I want to see if Manny Muhammad, how he's feeling today uh, after having the, the, the hamstring tweak uh, on Monday and over the weekend. So let, let's wait and see, but uh, we'll try to trace. We're going to try to get a little bit more clarity on the linebacker spot. I think that's a great question and not an unfair one at all. A couple of things I want to hit on real quick, Blake. Somebody asked about Dylan Mitchell in, in, in the portal. I'll just say this. I'll be surprised if Hunter or Mitchell's back in Texas next year at this point. And by the way, somebody asked also, um, my favorite uh, Girl Scout cookie. Okay, this one's easy. And that's not just me. They asked a general question. But mine is the Thin Mints from the freezer. Buy a couple of boxes of those, stick them in the freezer, bring them out of the freezer a couple of days later. One of my all-time favorites. And that's from somebody with a very, very bad sweet tooth. <laughs> Where did that question come from? Where? I don't know. Somebody also asked about Jordan Davis, and UT Boy followed up with a Jordan Davis. And somebody said, when is the uh, next time Jordan Davis will be on campus? Look, he's going to officially visit June 21st through 23rd. We're, he just hasn't released the dates. He's going to release those on his own time. I think there's a chance he's at the spring game. April 20th. Marcus Harris from Modern Day will be at both of those weekends. So we'll see if Jordan Davison is on campus April 20th. But I do believe George, June 21st, 23rd will be his official visit as of today. Is there a chance it moves to 14th, 16th? There's always a chance. But I think right now it's the 21st through 23rd. 
And then too broke to pay attention. Says, are the starting wide receivers right now, Bond, Cook, and interchanging Golden, Wingo, and more at the third spot? I don't know that. I think it's Bond for sure. Cook's in a little bit of a, a run right now um, with Golden, with Wingo, with Moore. If I had to guess right now, there's only one that I think is definitely a starter. And I know that that's going to be surprising to some people. But I would put Isaiah Bond there. And then I think it's a jumble right now. This is going to have – Jonte Cook's going to have to prove he, he deserves it. Uh, you know, Silas Bolden, when he gets on campus, same thing. Matthew Golden, same thing. And I don't know that Steve Sarkeesian has decided on that yet. Uh, toss them all up, see what, see who makes the most plays. If I if I were a betting man, I would bet on Cook for sure. Um, but I don't know that they're 100% on any of that yet. And then – Let's talk about our newest sponsor. I know y'all are both a fan here. Gooder. Hold on. I got to get prepared for this read, okay? I'm going glasses low. I'm going glasses high because I got two pairs of Gooder, and so should you. I mean, look, I was at a volleyball tournament, a uh, beach volleyball tournament this weekend uh, with some family stuff, and it was amazing how many people were wearing Gooders. I think it's becoming the brand of beach volleyball. And once I put mine on, I was like, I wore them all weekend, and I wore them driving the Austin Mon driving back from Austin Monday. These are my go-to glasses. I, I I wore them walking a couple of miles yesterday. Look, these are some stylish sunnies, starting at only twenty five dollars a pair, fifty thousand plus five star reviews. Hey, I haven't read them all, but I've read enough to know I made a good decision to wear these. One year warranty. It's kind of like pop art for your face, but make it fashion. No slip, no bounce. Look, neither one of these are slipping. No bounce. All polarized, all angles. I'm showing you all the angles right now. Made for medium-sized noggins. Thank goodness they fit on mine then. Uh, they're 100% polarized, guys, and only $25. If you want to support this show and try a pair, Gooder is giving on Texas football listeners 10% off your first order. You can go to gooder.com backslash on Texas, all caps, and use code on Texas to get 10% off. Gooder offers a 30 day money back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Again, that's gooder.com on Texas, all caps. And I can guarantee, I can say this I'm 100% satisfied with my Gooders. The only reason I'm taking them off is because I have to do the rest of the show without them. <laughs> Gary Hamilton would have looked good in risky business, huh? Hey, I, the, the other thing about Gooder is they're affordable. Um, and I would say this, I'm notoriously hard on glasses. So I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that wants to spend 200 bucks on a pair of sunglasses, you know? And so that they're affordable and you get a bunch of different, yes. you get a bunch of different styles for less than a hundred bucks. Uh, you get three of them uh, for that price. So Anyways, uh, I like Gooder as well. Hey, Jerry, I, before I, I got to get out of here in a second, the, the team, some of the guys are starting to show up here. Uh, you're, 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 what else do you want me to look at today? I guess is the question because I'm going to, me and CJ are getting ready to walk in there. What are, what are your thoughts? Well, you or CJ, what's the offensive line rotation today? Was that just a, you know, cross training, making sure, because Hayden Connor is a guy that has versatility and years in the program. With Cole Hudson maybe staying at left guard, Hayden Connor working at center a little bit, right? So um, I, I think that's what's interesting. Who's the first guard out in five on fives? And does is Hayden Connor snapping the ball again in the combo blocks? That's a big one for me because one practice is cross training. If you do it two practices in a row, that starts to become a little bit of a trend, right? Um, and also Jaden Chapman worked at left tackle, third team, the first practice we were at. And then on Monday, he was the second team right tackle. So Jaden Chapman's a guy that's played everywhere everywhere on the line or taking snaps everywhere. We talk about that depth Texas has. That what what's Kyle Flood? What's his next move with the offensive line this spring? I think that's something interesting to watch. And uh, somebody's asking if Golden's returning punts. Golden is kickoff return. Your punt returners on Monday were Isaiah Bond, one, John Tay Cook, two, Aaron Butler, three. And by the way, I think Aaron Butler has a chance to be a big-time punt returner because of that stop-start, lateral COD, um, and the ability to accelerate twice within a short amount of time. All right. Guys, I got to get going. They're, they're right, filing Bobby, in. And All right, y'all have a good one. Hook them. We'll oh, by the way, we'll be back for a live 
stream yes. after uh, after practice immediately just to follow up on what we heard and saw there inside Denny's Fields. All right, Bobby, see you later. All right, Bobby. Let me fix us, Jerry. All right, Jerry Hamilton. We have a super chat here from Rich Thompson. He says, I know you've talked on this before, but I haven't heard. When I played, which was in the early 80s, we only had official visits. There was no such thing as unofficial visits. Are there any differences? A big difference is that the unofficial visits, obviously the university can't pay for those. The experience for the kid once the visit begins is the same. I mean, it, you can the amount of time, there's no limit on time. I mean, official visits are limited to 48 hours, right? Paid 48 hours. An unofficial visit, you could stay in Austin for four days and show up at the facility every day, and, and there's nothing, as long as it's in one of the open periods, there's there's nothing against the you know NCAA uh, rules or anything like that. So the major difference is official visits are paid. They're limited to 48 hours on campus during that official visit, paid official visit. Um, now you can pay for two family members as well, I believe that is, so a couple of rooms. Uh, but with the unofficial visits, you have to pay your own way there. Uh, but it's unlimited time once you get on campus. All right. And then Brendan says, what's more likely, having two wide receivers with a thousand plus receiving yards or two running backs with a thousand plus all purpose yards? Two running backs with a thousand plus all purpose yards. And I'll, and I'll give you a little something here. Uh, at the UT Pro Day, I, I, I was walking around and ran into Cedric Baxter, who I, obviously I went to Orlando to see a couple of times, three times, I believe. Uh, during his recruitment and he, he made it i said hey man look good physically i can tell the difference in your body even though you weigh the same and i said you know how are things going and he was like hey Jaden blue and i are, we're both going to go for a thousand all-purpose yards this year so to answer your question i'm trusting cedric baxter <laughs> and i but i do agree that it, it, to answer your question i think it's more likely to run about 100% agreed. Jason Washington says, do you feel that what – this is going to be right up your alley. Spurrier had mentioned. Do you feel that what we currently have on the defensive line can get the job done this year if there are no other defensive tackle pickups? I remember the, a few of the Florida teams under Spurrier fared well with subpar defense. Yeah, so I think Texas, after the spring portal period, will have enough. Uh, I, think the, I think this is a really good attacking front on the interior. I think Alfred Collins, I think Vernon Broughton. Look, the crazy thing is Savea had better pass rush numbers than Vernon Broughton did, and Arizona was a really good team. So I, I think they're going to be fine attacking upfield, playing on the other team's line of scrimmage. I think to, and Jare Bledsoe, I think, is going to be very good at that in year three. I think they have a strength there. I think once they get the over-the-ball depth, uh, maybe get a front-line guy uh, in the spring out of the portal, I think they're I think they're fine. I, look, I, I'm, on, I'm on record, and I've seen – Two media windows, and I'll be back next week uh, because there's no media window Friday there. It will be next Tuesday and Thursday. I'll be back next week. I'm on record. I'm going to stay on record. I think Texas is going to be a better team next year than they were this year. Does that mean you go 11-1 in the regular season? It doesn't. You could have a, a worse record, but I think they're a better team next year than they were this year. I think the continued depth building, um, and so I, I, I think the D-line will get solved through the spring portal over the ball. Uh, I, I think Texas is going to have enough to make a run. I really do. Uh, and then it's going to come down to, you know, uh, health. Um, I think Quinn will take a step, but health, especially defensively on that front. I mean, you kind of, you saw last year, you know, when Ethan Burke kind of had that knee issue, there was a little, there was a drop off when he wasn't there opposite Baron Sorrell, who's been one of the most consistent performers for Texas over extended period of time we've seen. Uh, but you know, and then you just look at the guys, look at this recruiting the three straight top five classes, wait until Anthony Hill, you see Anthony Hill's a sophomore versus a freshman. Manny Muhammad's sophomore versus freshman. Terrence Brooks, year three versus year two. Derek Williams looks tremendous this spring. I've had multiple people tell me that. So his year two versus year one. I'm convinced this is going to be a better football team. I do think the schedule's tougher. So you could go 10 and two, or if you have injuries, go nine and three, still get in the playoff. But I think it's a better team than it was last year. I'll stand by it. And then we talk, we're talking about the defensive line, but let's talk about defensive line recruiting for a second, Jerry. Archmania says the D-line recruiting needs to get to an elite level. How confident are we to get a top three D-line class this year? And who are the takes to get us there? I, I think that's tricky because, look, I, I, if you look, look, if you want to look at recruiting numbers and say, okay, you got three guys that are ranked in the top 100 D-line solved, 
I think it's tricky because Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat weren't those guys. And they're going in the first and second round. Um, Keanjo Coburn was that guy. Moro Ojimo wasn't that guy. He, he was a senior riser, then it up top 300, 200 type kid in the country. Keandre Coburn was the highest ranked out of high school of the four guys I just mentioned. And was he the best? He wasn't. Um, so I, I think, look, I do think Brandon Brown is a potentially special prospect and it's going to be a dog fight, but you got to win that dog fight and keep, and keep him in the class. I think Zion Williams fits the over the ball in the SEC. Uh, Texas has a chance to get Malik Autry in on an unofficial visit April 6th coming up here, the Auburn commitment. He's dynamite over the ball, but that's a war daddy battle, right? Um, and Josiah Sharma is supposed to be on campus this weekend. It could get pushed back the next weekend, but right now it's scheduled to be this weekend. Josiah Sharma out of Folsom, California, I think is one of the best in the country. So I think Texas is going to give themselves enough shots on goal to where they can pull off two or three of these. And then you have a guy like a DJ Sanders, who I put more in the developmental long-term class of, of the D-line. And if you take four and he's your fourth, um, he's scheduled to come in June 21st, 23rd, and be on campus April 6th. I, I, that's th that's a good class. Does that guarantee success? Eh, no, because if you look at Georgia, you know, they haven't had Jordan Davis after Jordan Davis. They actually missed on some of those highly ranked guys. If you go look at Georgia, so it's not a for sure thing, but obviously if you can string three classes in a row of, of high level guys at any position, you're going to hit on enough of them to where it's going to be a big difference maker. I will stay on the defensive front I, here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, back, and we're going to get the max Moeller's question after that eight fifty three. I want to make a comment on that one. All right, Rob says, are we overstocked at edge? I think when we didn't get our edge guy the previous year, we went overboard this year. Um, I don't think so, just for the fact that Baron Sorrell, he's, this is his final year at Texas. And Bobby and I are a little different on Ethan Burke. If Ethan Burke ascends in year three like he did in year two, he's going to have a decision to make, right? Uh, Trey Moore, if he has a great – this is his it. This is it for him. He has one really good year. He's gone. Uh, so Texas could lose three impact guys at edge. So I – and especially with the the injury issues for Colton Vosick, I don't think Texas is overstocked. I love both freshmen, Colin Simmons and Zena. And the great thing for Texas, they're different players, different positions uh, at, at edge. So I don't think Texas is overstocked. I think this 25 class is actually really important. Uh, Lance Jackson's going to end up being a top 25, 30 kid in the country. He's as highly ranked as anybody. Smith or Robo, Screamer off the edge. Hayden Lowe, there's some people on the West Coast that think he has as much talent as Kayvon Thibodeau long term. So we'll see on that. But I think getting three of those guys in this class is still going to be key. I then want to go to what you were just talking about with Max. He says, it's Matai Tagaoa Eyes world. Jerry, testify. I'm, you must get him. He looks like a point guard on the field. Freaky quick and long. I Look, I think this guy's a potentially elite elite player um and, and i and i'm I, I say this and people are going to get take it the wrong way he is a poor man's Derek johnson if you look at high school tapes and i say that and i'm not saying he's going to go be Derek johnson be the best linebacker texas had and maybe an nfl hall of famer but what i am saying is the skill set mateo was a former safety that's grown in growing in the linebacker he has got snap count anticipation off the charts. That's what Derek Johnson had in high school. He lived in the backfield. It was like he was taking handoffs half the time. Like that John Tyler game, I ran into Alan Wilson, the head coach at Cujo at the time uh, at, at North Crowley a few weeks ago, and we were talking about that, that Derek Johnson had 30 tackles in that playoff game against, against then John Tyler High. And it, he was just – he was beating everybody off the snap to the ball. Um, and Mateo has a little bit of that in him, but then he's also got range. He can play in space. He can drop in coverage. And the other thing he's got for a guy that's 195 pounds, his contact physicality, you feel it. So what's he going to be like at 230 pounds? I think he's, and I love Riley Pettijon and I love Elijah Barnes. And I think Mateo is just on the same level. Those guys are maybe even the best space player of any of them. He's his snap, his snap count anticipations off the charts. 
And then Shook wants, wants to know, Jerry, does Zena have a chance to be as good or better than Joseph Asai? Uh, different, much different. Uh, I think Joseph Osai was was really good in space player at, at that position at Texas. I think Zena is going to be more of a downhill guy, right? I think that's what he is uh, more so than Osai was. I think they're different players. Um, could he be as successful in his own way? zena has got that upside for sure. All right, let's see here. The only thing I'll say, some people have made comments. Derek Johnson coming out of high school, though, guys, was 6'3", 205. I mean, so he wasn't a he wasn't the 230 that people saw at Texas. He was he was about 205 uh coming out of high school, maybe even 200. Okay, let's talk, let's go back over to the offense for a minute. LL, what is one thing that Quinn needs to improve on to take Texas to the next level? I have two things with Quinn. I think year three is just going to be – he's going to continue to be more comfortable uh, in the scheme as a quarterback at the University of Texas. When you take the ball with the expectations at Texas, that's different. I mean, Alabama has that. Georgia's built their way into that. Ohio State has that. Michigan has that. USC has that. I mean, there aren't a lot of schools that come with the same expectation of here's the ball, here's 108,000. Uh, fans in DKR, and here's the expectations of being in the playoff and competing for a national championship. If you look around college football, Texas is one of those few schools that has that pressure. Um, and I think he's going to deal with that better in year three than year two. Um, I think that's part of a natural process for guys, right? And uh, guys have struggled with that that have been tremendous players. And I don't think Quinn struggled with that. I just think he's going to be more comfortable with it. But I think red zone is where he's got to me. And I, a lot of people – the feet in the pocket, I think, will get quicker. I think he's year three in the system. I think he's going to be more comfortable. He looks as more confident than ever when I've seen him, whether that was the pro day, which should give him a lot of confidence. And then the spring practices, he looks as comfortable and confident as I've ever seen him. Those feet just moving quicker in the pocket under duress, I think, is a big thing for him. But I think that's it, – it, as for Texas, that's big. But I think for his career, the next 10 years, that's big for him. Uh, but then red zone. Uh, him and Sark coming together on the red zone, the improvements there. Uh, I think are the key. Uh, look, Quinn's throwing the ball the middle, seams in, middle down the field as well as he ever has. That's where his strength is a deep ball thrower. As the sidelines, that's where I think he'll improve as time uh, goes on. But I think you're going to see a better quarterback. Does that mean you're going to see 75% completions next year? I'm not going there. It's a downfield true passing scheme. To uh, Tong Vailoa completed 69% and 71 as two years a starter at Alabama. And he had four first round picks at wide receiver. So I think the number, and Quinn was right about that area 71 last year. I think you'll see Quinn about the same area because it's a downfield passing scheme. Um, and it's a real testing passing scheme that stretches the defense horizontally, vertically. So you're not going to go complete 78% in that. It's not going to happen. Uh, if Tua didn't do it with those wide receivers and that talent around him at Alabama, it's not happening. Uh, but I think he's just going to be more comfortable, more confident, uh, and everything that he's built on headed into year three with all the starts he now has. A stronger guy, when you're stronger, you have more confidence. He looks stronger behind his neck, his shoulders, and in his lower body. He looks stronger this year to me, uh, and that gives you more confidence as well. Hi, right, Jerry. we got time for a few more questions, but before we get to those, I need to tell folks out there about Adam Lowy. And Adam of the Lowy Law Firm specializes in results for his clients, whether it's in a tragic car wreck, an accident in the workplace, or any sort of serious catastrophic injury. Adam is who you want to call. Call Adam today at 512-280-0800 or reach him online at LowyLawFirm.com for a free consultation. And remember, Adam focuses on results. So I want to thank him for sponsoring every Wednesday right here on Coffee and Football. And Michael Rodriguez says, good morning. Do you believe that this that this team is becoming more versatile, especially on the defensive side of the ball? Yes, I, I do. And I think they're, it's becoming a deeper, more athletic defense. That That's a big thing for me. I can't tell you guys that how different the safety position looks to me at the two open practices and we'll look on the field this year. Uh, in the spring game, it, the athleticism has taken the athleticism combined with, I call it safety eyes, instincts for the position, I think took a, two big steps uh, between last season and what we're going to see this season. Derek Williams in year two, of course, Michael Taft's a more experienced player, but Andrew McCuba, 
I think is just he's just better than what Texas had last year at the position. I mean, you're better there. Um, and then and then you have Jelani McDonald, who's running second team right now with all a year into a college program, actually concentrating on being a defensive back for the first time truly in his career. He's a jack of all trades, quarterback, did whatever to help Wake O'Connelly win games. Those guys generally end up being really good safeties, but it does take them some time to actually learn the position. But that versatility he brings you. Then the two freshmen running third team right now, Phil Samee and Jordan Johnson Rebell, two totally different players, but it kind of goes back to what I was talking about. Phil Samee from an athletic standpoint, the physicality standpoint, he's extremely high end. Jordan Johnson Rebell from the eyes of a safety instinctive part, the guy that can call your defense for you is a high-end guy. Um, so I, I I love what Texas did in recruiting at safety, in the portal at safety. Uh, I think it's a huge upgrade in this program, not just this season, but moving forward. Uh, because you got Derek Williams for two more. You should have Taft for two more. And, you know, Phil Samee and those guys, I mean, the only guy you're going to lose is Makuba off of that group. So uh, the safety position took a big step. I think Edge with Trey Moore, Colin Simmons, that added pass rush, um, you can play some different lineups, right? Uh, to get to to get accelerate that pass in ascend as pass rushing group. I really like what Texas is doing. I think the linebackers, the young uh, linebackers at Texas, uh, Leon Lafau, so good in space, right? I mean, we'll see what happens as development of all those guys. But I, I think Texas is just on the right track, guys, from a talent standpoint, versatility standpoint, and they've already proven they're developing players. And so if you recruit a bunch of top five classes with different strengths, players with different strengths, you're going to have that versatility uh, because you you have some you have some faith that Texas is developing that talent. Uh, so UT boy asks, how fast is Kelshawn Johnson out of Hitchcock? I think if you put Kelshawn on a football field on Friday night, he's a high 4-3 guy. I think that's what he is. And I'll say this with uh, Kelshawn, if he was – went football track and didn't play basketball and actually trained for track, I think he might run 10-3 as a senior. I just don't think we're going to see that because he goes from football to basketball who won state again, and they'll have another deep playoff run next year. And then you go to track. So you start track late. You don't really train for summer track in summer track on AAU team. So he's not even close to being tapped out on how fast he is. All right, Rudy O, three potential first-round picks in the draft this year. Could we do it again next year? Um, Kelvin Banks, Quinn. Quinn, throw in one more. It could happen easily. See what Isaiah Bond does. Um, you know, it could happen easily. And then Mike D, will this team be better than the 2009 team? Could this be the best offensive team ever for Texas? Uh, I'm not sure they'll execute quite the level of the 09 team um, with Colt, but that was a different passing scheme. Again, that kind of goes back to what, what we're what I was saying earlier is you're not going to see 75, 76, 77 percent completions. This is such a downfield passing game. Um, so there's rhythm with that. There's pass blocking. Everything's got to fit together in, in, in a scheme that attacks from all angles and in, in the entire field. So I, I do think talent wise. And I know it's saying a lot because Worthy and A.D. Mitchell could both go in the first round or first, second round. But I think with the experience on the offensive line, which is light years better than the 9 team, um, Quinn in year three, all the talent wide receiver as a whole, Nye Black is going to be the fastest tight end Texas has had since when, guys. I mean, he's going to run 4-5 at the combine. I've seen it in person. Now he moves like a wide receiver. He's the fastest tight end since when. Uh, running back versatility. Uh, you have a number of guys who fit the inside zone scheme. Then you have guys like Jaden Blue, who if you can get in space, get him to the edges. Not that you can't run him inside, but you don't want his 12, 15 touches to be inside zone. That's not using him, uh, maximizing his talent, and that's not how he's going to be maximized. But the versatility, the speed as a whole of this offense, quite possibly. Uh, Jerry, the, rules, the rules in the game are different too, though. So yeah. something to take in the fact when you're just comparing points scored. We'll go two more questions, then we better get out of here. Commit King says, what up, Longhorn family? Question, Aaron Butler, while committed to Colorado, was interested in playing both ways. Is there any word on him possibly playing wide receiver and defensive back for us? Thanks for everything. Hook him. Yeah, so I think that's one of the big reasons he went to Texas. He wants to play wide receiver. 
And if Deion Sanders is talking about playing DB, it's hard to say, no, Deion, I'm just playing wide receiver, right? I mean, that, see, that seemed like a really good business decision right there. Uh, so, But I think that's one of the big reasons he chose Texas. And he chose Texas without ever making a visit, official visit. That's putting a lot of faith in Sarkeesian. And that's uh, that he the, he liked the message is you're going to play wide receiver and be a return man in my offense at the University of Texas. We're talking Steve Sarkeesian's message because he was committed to USC as a corner at a young age. Then he flipped to Colorado. Deion's, and that, by the way, that tells you how talented Aaron Butler is. If you're good enough to commit early at, to USC as a corner, flip to Deion Sanders, and he's telling you, I'll just take you. You can play wherever. But you know what? He, I might make you do some reps at corner just to see if you like it. And then end up at Sar Sarkeesian at Texas on offense. That's a pretty talented guy. For sure. And Gary Smallwood. Hey, guys, any word on how Ty Anthony Smith is doing early on at his time at Texas? I know it's early, but I haven't heard his name mentioned by Sark. Stat he's a stash and development guy from a physical standpoint. But I will tell you this. He – I've heard instinctively he's been really good. I mean, he just needs some time physically. You're talking about a guy, a small school guy, right? He, he he played football. He played basketball. He had a knee injury a sophomore year during basketball season, so it caused him to miss some of his junior year. He's had, to, he's had some setbacks as far as physical development go. But, look, he's six one and a half with a 79-inch wingspan. He is a plus eight wingspan guy. He may be 80. So those guys – they're going to take a little time to fill out physically. I, what I things I liked uh, about Ty Anthony when I visited Jasper High School was what Coach Crumity told me about him. He said, look, Jerry, we can play him at linebacker. We can play him off the edge. We can play him at running back. He can take snaps at quarterback. We can line him up at wide receiver because he has the ability to take in all the information and, and, and take it to the field and not mess up plays, not mess up timing, not get pre-snap penalties. He is a very strong football player instinctively. And that gives guys a great chance once they settle into a position and he's in, his instincts are linebacker. So that gives him a really good chance once he settles in and gets his frame physically where it needs to be. I, I think he's going to be a player for Texas. I'll be surprised if he's not long-term. I tell you what, we'll do one more, Jerry. I lied. We're going to do one more. That's good. Jackson, who leads the team in rushing this year? And this will be it. Uh, Cedric Baxter, if he's healthy. He fits the scheme. It's year two. Um, just, just think about running backs from year one to year two, uh, how much impro improvement they make there. Um, I think he's going to lead the team in rushing at Texas this year. Uh, I, I, for me, there's not really any question about that. Uh, now, does Jaden Blue have more all-purpose yards? We'll see. Okay. Well, man, that's going to do it for today's episode of Coffee and Football presented by Adam Lowy and the Lowy Law Firm. We want to thank them along with Gooder and Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. Uh, and then the boys will be back, what, Jerry, probably in an app, not even an hour? Yeah, well, we'll all be back. We'll be back here uh, inside an hour. So uh, set your notifications, subscribe and like, set your notifications. You um, and, and come, we'll, Bobby and myself and CJ will be back for a, uh, uh, recap of what they saw at the media session, which has now begun. It's going on right now. So we'll be back here in a short amount of time. All you guys come back that can. Thank you very much, as always, uh, to tuning in to On Texas Football, like and subscribing, on OnTexasFootball.com. We have a bunch of stuff over there. I can't thank you guys enough for supporting the channel and supporting what we do. We're about to go over 40,000, and I can't wait till we all celebrate 100,000 together one day. There you go. All right, and yes, thank you for the super chats, the great conversation. Head on over to ontexasfootball.com for more Texas coverage, around-the-clock coverage, and for Bobby Burton, who left us, but we'll be back, and Jerry Hamilton, I'm Blake Monroe, and we will see you <laughs> tomorrow Get your morning. Get your man.